This is my Scobie. Good morning and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to make kombucha. So I'm going to show you guys how to turn this bottle of GTS Original Kombucha into this, which is my um, homemade orange ginger kombucha. So making kombucha is actually really simple. It just takes a bit of time. And this is what you will need. One bottle of GTS Original Kombucha. Half a cup of sugar. And some tea. So I use three teaspoons of loose leaf tea, but you can use four bags of regular tea too. So first you want to measure half a cup of sugar and pour it into some container for you to brew your tea in. Then add your tea and then add hot water. You want your tea to steep until it is cooled down. So now you just wanna stir it to make sure the sugar has dissolved. Now you just wanna let it um, steep and cool until it's not hot anymore, just cause you don't wanna kill the bacteria in the uh, original kombucha. So you just let it chill. And then come back to it when it's cool and we will build the starter tea. Hi, so now the tea has cooled down completely. So I have this large jar. I think it's 2000 milliliters, which is four pints, which is two half a gallon. I think this is half a gallon. You just pour this tea inside. This is the GTS original kombucha. And you pour your sweet tea in. I think mine is green tea, but you can use whatever tea you have. I only steeped it in this much tea because I didn't want to wait for an entire jar of tea to cool down. And then I just add cold water in. So this was like very concentrated sweet tea. And then I'm just like putting extra water in to make sure I get all of the tea flavor. And then make sure you get everything from the kombucha bottle as well because there's like all of that bacteria and stuff in the bottom of it. So I started making kombucha when I was in Sweden, of course, <laughs> but that's just because it was super expensive to buy it there. I think it was the same price, but I just, I thought everything in Sweden was expensive. And then I was like, I don't want to pay that much. So I'm just going to try and brew my own. And then my corridor mate Raquel had um, someone's kombucha starter and she grew the scoby for me and then shared some of it with me. And so that's how I started making my own kombucha. Then after this, we're just going to let it sit for about two weeks and I'll check on it um, each week or so and show you guys how it's going. So yeah, this is it, super easy. So you just take a towel and you cover it and then put a rubber band on it. So you want there to be air that goes in, but you want it to be like filtered air without all of the dust and stuff. Anyways, this is just gonna go to sit in a dark place <laughs> for two weeks. So yeah, you want it to be in a dark place away from direct sunlight. Cool, see you guys soon. Hi, so it's been maybe like a week and a half since I made my kombucha and this is what it looks like. It's gotten a little bit lighter and it still smells quite tea-y, so I know it's not ready yet. There isn't like a full scoby formed, but there's little particles, so basically it's just not ready and I need to wait longer. But I'm just gonna give it a stir. and then also give it a quick taste. To me, it tastes quite tea-y, so it just means it's not ready, and I just need to let it sit for longer. Usually with the first batch, it can take a little bit longer for um, the yeast to like develop and stuff, but then after that, you get a better feel for how long it'll take, and also, the temperature does matter. So the warmer it is, the faster the yeast will develop, and the colder it is, the slower it'll develop. Kind of just like sourdough. I mean, I guess that's just like fermentation in general. So <laughs> this is gonna go back to the cabinet. So this is the end of the second week. My kombucha s smells less caffeine-y and a little more sour. So that's good, but I don't think it's done yet. 
But like the smell that I look for for a kombucha that is ready to be bottled is quite a strong sour smell. And mine still smells kind of sweet. So mine at the surface, it's like just starting to form like a little scoby, but it's not fully formed yet. So I'm just going to leave it for a little bit longer, maybe like a week or so. I'll see you guys, I don't know, in a week, week and a, or like half a week or something. Smells good though. So this is the end of the third week and this is what the kombucha looks like now. So as you can see, it's lightened in color. It smells like pretty um, sour and a little bit vinegary. I'm just gonna give it a taste. I'm gonna make sure to swirl it around. Yeah, that has a really strong like sour taste. It just tastes fermented. There's like a very thin scoby at the top. This thing, it's very thin, but it's the scoby. So like the more batches that you do, the thicker the scoby will grow. So right now it's just one layer, and then each time you do it, it'll grow another. <laughs> each time you do it, it'll, it'll grow another layer, and it'll get thicker and thicker. So at some point, you're gonna have to like throw away some of those layers. I just throw them in the trash. But yeah. Hi, so it's been about three and a half weeks now and we're gonna check on the kombucha. It's gotten a lot lighter in color from when um, I first made it. So that just shows me that like the yeasts in the kombucha has like eaten all of that caffeine and tea and sugar as food and now it's nice and fermented. So I'm just gonna taste it really quick, stir it, and then taste it and see how it is. And like once I stirred it, there's a little bit of carbonation on the top, which is nice. So it tastes um quite sour, I guess. I mean, it tastes like kombucha to me, but I've had kombucha a lot, so I guess that's not so helpful. But um, it doesn't taste like caffeine -y or tea -y anymore, so it's a little sour. And then it doesn't taste sweet either. And that's how you know that it's been like properly fermented. Because the tea that we originally put in was like quite sweetened. And then it smells pretty sour. There's a hint of vinegariness to it, but it's not overwhelmingly vinegary. So. It smells nice. <laughs> Anyways, I would consider this to be done. I um, let my kombucha sit for a little bit longer. Like usually you can finish your first batch of kombucha in say like two, two and a half weeks, but I was a little bit lazy and didn't check on it as often as I should have. So it took me around three, three and a half weeks. You mainly just wanna see that it's lightened in color. It smells like a hint of vinegariness and it doesn't taste sweet or tea-y and caffeine-y anymore. And then you should be good to start bottling it. And I'll show you what the scoby looks like. I swirled around my kombucha, so it kind of got tangled within itself and <laughs> isn't like a layer, a layer anymore, but that's totally okay. My uh, scoby is very thin just because uh, the more you grow your scoby, the more layers will form on it. That's how you get one of those like thick looking ones that you see on the internet and stuff. But this is mine. It kind of looks like a booger. So now I'm going to bottle it and then that will be in the next video. I hope you guys like the video and you'll subscribe down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.